Hi students, hope everyone is fine and safe. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all to my new video. And today's video is about another interesting topic in unit 4. We are going to see basic concepts of pipelining. And this is a very important question in this particular unit, right? So in this video, we will see what is pipelining, what are the different stages of pipelining, what is meant by two-stage pipelining, and what is four-stage pipelining. That is what we are going to see in this video. And before starting with what is pipelining, you got to understand why pipelining is very important, right? We, know, we have already seen, right, to improve the performance of the processor, there are different techniques, right? That is superscalar operation. And another very important technique to improve the performance of the processor is pipelining, right? How can we improve a processor performance? That is, we got to make the processor to perform to to perform various operations at the same time, right? Only then we can able to improve the performance of the processor, correct? Right? Instead of executing one particular instruction, it should be able to execute more instructions at the same time, right? For that, we have different techniques like superscalar operation, different faster circuitry technology and all those things. And very important technique is pipelining, okay? And what is pipelining, right? Uh, to make it very simple, it is a process which facilitates parallel operation, which facilitates concurrent operation, as simple as that. That is known as pipelining, right? We can also say that the process arrangement of hardware elements in such a way that it performs simultaneous execution of the instructions, right? And as a whole, it will improve the performance of the processor, right? And what is instruction pipelining, right? What is instruction pipelining? For example, if we have these two instructions, okay? That is load R1 comma R2. And similarly, you have add R3 comma R4. For example, if you have these two instructions, okay. Normally, right, you know what is sequential operation? What is sequential operation? One by one, it will, it will execute the instruction, correct? Right, first it will execute this instruction and then it will execute this instruction, okay. But what is instruction pipelining, right? Instruction pipelining is... Like, it will do parallel operation at the same time, right? Parallel operation in the sense concurrent operation. That is, right, before the execution of this particular instruction is completed, it will start executing this particular instruction, right? That is called as pipelining, right? Without overlapping, it will perform that operation. That is very important, okay? You can see here the number of instructions are pipeline and execution of current instruction is overlapped by the execution of subsequent instruction. Right? That is, with, before completing the first instruction, it will execute the next instruction. Correct? Right? Without harming the first instruction execution. Right? And this is the basics about pipelining. Right? To make it very clear, I'll give you a very simple example. Right? That is, you take a car manufacturing unit. Right? You would have seen a lot of videos or even in films, you would have seen car manufacturing unit. Correct? Right. If you take a man manufacturing unit, car manufacturing unit, you will have different stations. Right. That is uh, one station. For example, one station, uh, they will be responsible. They will be having labors uh, where they will design the chases of the car. Right. And there will be another station where they will build the body of the car. Right. And there will be another station where they will fit the engine of the car. Right. And so on. Right. So you have different stations in the manufacturing units, right? The first will be chases and then it will be body and then someone will be working in the engines and all those things, correct? Right. And now you got to understand each and every stations will be performing at the same time, right? This chases st station, right? This employees will be building a chases for one particular car, right? And uh, building a body will be done by the different labors, Right, for different set of car, right? And similarly, uh, fitting the engine for a different car will be taking place at the same time, right? This is different car, and this is different car, and this is different car, right? Once this car chases is done, it will send to the body, correct? Right? And the chases will start, the chases unit will start building chases for the next car, right? And similarly, as a whole, if you see, for one particular car to get complete, it will take many days, right? But as a whole, if you see even like for every hour or for every minute, 
there will be one particular car which will be manufactured, it will be uh, delivered from that manufacturing unit, correct? That is only because of this pipelining operation, right? There is no sequential operation here. For example, what is sequential operation? First, they have to build the chases and then that particular car, it has to send to the build for building the body and then it is sent to the fitting the engine right once this car once the once the car unit that is once the car moved to the body body unit the chassis employees will be idle correct and similarly once this moved to this particular unit the body uh, building labors will be idle right that is known as sequential operation right if it is sequential operation it will take many many years or even one two years to complete a car correct Right. So, this particular concept is called as pipelining, right? Parallelly executing the operation. So that on a whole, if you see, right, if you take one particular car, right, to manufacture that particular car, it will take more days, right? But as, as a whole, if you take each and every day or even hourly basis, there will be a number of cars will be manufactured on a hourly basis or even a daily basis, right? That is only because of pipelining. I hope you understand the basic concepts of pipelining, correct? Right. So, and now we'll see what is about instruction pipelining, okay? So, for instruction pipelining, you know that for executing any particular instruction, for example, if you take this particular instruction, move R1, comma, R2, right? If you take any, this particular instruction, okay? You know that in order to execute this particular instruction, first, the processor has to fetch the instruction, from the memory, right? It has to fetch the instruction, right? And you know that MAR, MDR, and instruction register, program counter, all those comes into play, right? Right? And once it is fetched, then the execution phase will start, right? So for executing any particular instruction, you have two operations. One is fetching phase, another one is execution phase, right? And you can see here, for any instruction, if you take, you will have fetching phase and as well as execution phase. Fetching phase, execution phase, fetching phase and execution phase, right? Which means you need two hardware elements. One is fetching unit, another one is execution unit, right? And these two units is, is connected through a buffer, interstage buffer, right? And you know what is fetching unit will do? Fetch unit, what it will do? It will read the instruction from the memory. It will fetch the instruction from the memory, right? And after fetching that instruction, it will store that instruction in the buffer, Right. This is very, very important because the information which is fetched has to be stored in the buffer because the execution unit will perform the execution. Right. It will perform this exact move operation only after reading the instruction, after getting the information from this buffer. Right. So it will get the information from the buffer and it will start executing it. Right. And the destination, the result will be stored in the in the exact register or exact location which is which is mentioned in the instruction itself okay this is the normal execution operation okay so this is called two stage execution okay two stage execution okay now what is pipelining how how you know what is fetching and what is execution okay now where comes pipelining here right for example right you can see this particular diagram okay right if you take Four clock cycles. That is, we know that in any processor, every operation will complete in within a time period, right? And you know that any particular operation inside a processor, any particular single operation, right? That has to be completed within one clock cycle, okay? And you can see here, if we take four clock cycles here, right? In the first clock cycle, we know that in all the instructions, there will be a fetch phase and there will be an execution phase. Correct? Right. So, for instruction 1, right, during the clock cycle 1, instruction 1 will be fetched. Correct? Right. Instruction 1 will be fetched. Right. And that information, at the end of this clock cycle, at the end of the first clock cycle, the information what is fetched, it will be stored in the buffer. Right? You know what is buffer? Buffer is something which is between instruction unit and the execution unit. Right? So, only with the information which is present in the buffer, the execution unit will start executing that particular instruction. Correct? Right. So, during the first clock cycle, the instruction will be fetched from the memory and it will be stored in the buffer. Right. Now, during the second clock cycle, 
Right. Now the fetch unit, you know that there is fetch unit and execution unit. Right. After first is a clock cycle, the fetch unit completes its process. Right. Now, during the second clock cycle, what will happen? During the second clock cycle, now remember, the fetch unit completed its operation and it is ideal. Okay. And during second cycle, the information which is present in the buffer, it will be executed by this particular execution unit. Right. The execution unit will execute this information, that, that instruction which is present in the buffer. Right. At the same time, at the same time, right, the, since the fetch unit is idle here, the fetch unit, what it will do, it will fetch the second instruction. You can see here, second instruction, right. So, at the clock cycle 2, execution unit will execute the instruction 1, right, and the fetch unit will start fetching the instruction 2, right. And similarly, during the clock cycle 3, what will happen? During clock cycle 3, right, at the end of the clock cycle 2 itself, the execution of instruction 1 will be completed, right, and the instruction which is fetched in the fetch phase will be stored in the buffer, right, which will be stored in the buffer 1, right, which is in buffer, right, that is, in the buffer, there was already the instruction I1, correct, right, the instruction which is fetched here is already there, now it is replaced by instruction 2, correct, Right. And similarly, right. Now, you can see that during the third instruction, third clock cycle, what will happen? The information right now in the buffer will be I2, right? So, the instruction 2 will be ex start executing. And similarly, the fetch unit will start fetching the instruction 3, right? So, at the same time, it performs fetching and as well as execution of different instructions. That is called as pipelining, right? And this is two-stage pipelining, right? And whatever I explain now, that is what is given as points here. Right, you can see the first clock cycle, the fetch unit fetches in section 1 and stores in buffer 1. And during clock cycle 2, right, fetch unit in section 2, fetches the in section 2. And similarly, the execution unit performs I1, executing the I1. Similarly, the clock 3, what will happen? The in section 2 will start executing and fetching unit will start fetching the in section 3. Right. This is called as pipelining process. Okay. Thank you, students. Thank you for watching. Kandipa in the video, Ongal Kalar, Kurumbu useful Subscribe, passionate professor, and keep learning. Thank you very much.